My name is Rich Hawkins. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the technical keys to achieve success with a bank cart repair. So this patient is a recurrent instability patient, age 22. We assess for range of motion on the table. We then assess for translation of the glenohumeral joint. So the first step to success is to determine the amount of anterior translation and whether in fact this patient dislocates right over the rim, which as you can see here, he does. And then we assess his inferior translation as well. We then mark out the landmarks and the portals are the second step to success to be sure that they're accurate and where we want them to be. And our setup is with a lateral distraction strap to laterally distract the joint. We're then going to mark out the landmarks and establish our portals. You can see here at the front, anterior to the AC joint, we have a universal portal our posterior portal that we visualize through. And we need some space at the front here to get in two portals because we really like to do a two portal technique. We identify the pathology, which is the next key. This patient happens to have a slap lesion as well as a large bank heart lesion. And the fact that it's a large bank heart lesion would determine that we're going to do a fair amount of uh, bank heart repair with some capsular repair here. As you can see here, we look up the undersurface to determine there's a little bit of a hill sacs impression, nothing of significance. So we then decompress the anterior glenoid rim with our shaver and, and uh, different instruments to decorticate the bone. We do the same with the slap lesion above because we're subsequently going to repair that. So we want to lift up the bank heart lesion so we can see the subscapularis belly, which we can see here. So we're now ready to do our arthroscopic bank heart repair. We're actually going to demonstrate three different methods of suturing. One a mattress, one a single suture, which is a, a device loaded so we can go through one cannula and tension it down. And then finally, my favorite, a simple suture passing technique. So here now, we are going to look at the front to demonstrate uh, the anterior bank heart lesion and the anterior bone which we've decorticated. So you can see here we're ready to do the repair. We then need to establish another portal at the front. It can be done from outside in or inside out. Here we're doing it from inside out by passing a device over top of our Wissinger rod and dilating it up to insert a cannula, just balancing out the scope and the cannula to make sure they both stay in the joint. And then we insert our additional portal, so we have two portals and two cannulas coming in, and we can see from with inside the joint that they're both in the interval, and we're now prepared with our two-portal technique to do our arthroscopic bank card. Our first hole is at the inferior 5 o'clock position, so we can pull upwards on the bank card in the capsule. We insert our anchor, and we actually like to work with one suture to keep it simple. So we're going to pass our device uh, with a PDS. As you can see here, we're pulling on the suture and it slides both ways, which means we'll pull the suture out of the eyelet. So we have to secure one of the arms of the suture to be sure we don't pull it out of the eyelet, a critical step. We then have a passing device and there are various of these commercially available. We're going to pass from right to left through some capsule and through some labrum to bring it out so that we can then shuttle our sutures to tie them down subsequently. And we're going to pass twice in this case to do a mattress suture. The mattress allows us perhaps to create a bumper uh, a little more effectively and perhaps to get the suture safely on the other side of the tissue. My favorite method, mind you, is a simple suture passed once. So here we pass once and we pull through. We pull from the glenoid rim to the soft tissue. If we pull the other way, sometimes the uh, sutures become detached. So this is a PDS. We tie a knot, pass through. Now we're going to pull on the PDS, and you'll see it come through here uh, from the anchor through the capsular tissue, and then we're going to secure this down, but we're going to pass it once more in a mattress formation uh, to demonstrate how we do this in a mattress fashion. So now you can see we have a simple suture there, and here we come again with another pass with our PDS suture. We likewise, in a similar fashion, pull this through, and now we have a mattress ready to tie down, which we'll demonstrate in a moment. The amount of capsule and labrum we take depends upon the pathology present and depends upon the amount of translation of the humeral head under anesthesia. A lot of translation requires a big operation, more capsule 
and labrum two. So you can see here we're just tying a knot. This is an SMC knot. Uh, you have your probably favorite uh, knot that you like to work with. You need a sliding knot so we secure it down. You can see the mattress uh, puts the knot safely out of the way. We secure this down and always do our pass pointing to make sure we have a secure knot and we just test it with our probe. We're next going to do a device where we insert through one cannula and suture it down without doing any shuttling. So we uh, pass our PDS suture, and we this time pull it through a lot into the joint, pull our device out back through the tissue, and grab that that we pulled through so we have two arms of the PDS come out the cannula. And then we shuttle a suture that we want to use through the tissue. At this point, uh, we have a hole drilled in the glenoid face, and we can use our device to secure the suture down without doing any shuttling and without tying any knots. So this is a device that allows us to do that. Again, there are uh, several of these on the market that allow this to be done without suturing. So you can see here, we're gonna crank this down, insert it into the hole that we'll find again in the glenoid. And when we lock the knot in position, or at least the anchor in position, and tap it down here, we can then crank down on the device to secure the tissue down in a single suture fashion through one cannula. So this is another method of uh, achieving the bank cart suturing technique. The next and final one we're going to demonstrate is my favorite, which is a simple suture with a suture shuttling technique. And I usually do this oh, three times, three anchors uh, in a simple fashion, and that creates for me the simplest way of doing a bank cart repair. So we can see we have a little left at the top here. So we've got two anchors in. So we'll put a third anchor in here and pass uh, our suture through and shell it in a simple fashion. So the anchor is going in, we tap it down. And again, we go through the process of not pulling the suture out of the eyelet, but being careful by securing one of the sutures. So when we pull on it, it doesn't both slide together, but slides independently. So now we come again with our uh, some type of instrument, lasso, spectrum, whatever, to pass our suture. We go this time through capsule and then also through some labrum, so a double pass, if you will, which is often very helpful. It doesn't have to be done that way, uh, but this just demonstrates it very nicely. And then again, we pull our PDS out, we pull it through, and we transfer, put a snap on it, transfer the snap to the other side, and tie our, our little knot PDS and pull it through. Um, and secure the knot down. We're passing our device here to be sure we get the knot on the labral side, not on the joint side that's out of harm's way from the joint. We do not use uh, any suture with wire in it, but softer suture, which is fairly strong. We're past pointing here. So now we have three anchors in place, and this probably will suffice to stabilize his shoulder. Because this gentleman has a slap tear above, we are going to put one anchor in here and we're gonna put uh, through the uh, uh, junction of the supraspinatus and tendon, uh, an anchor down into the superior glenoid rim. We still have two cannulas in place, so it allows us a little more flexibility. We also have two sutures, so we can do double if we want to. So we'll move the white sutures out of the way through the anterior cannula, and then we'll come down our cannula through the labrum with our bird's beak, and since we have our other cannula in place, we can help position this in to the mouth of the bird's beak and then pull it through. As we pull through, we then can uh, tie down the suture, the colored suture, to create a fixation of the slap lesion. Just one suture, which will be sufficient. 